we'll, we'll revert back to that. Senator Rono, you have the floor. Thank you very much. It's very clear that the uh, two of you have uh, utmost confidence in uh, Mr. Delbeni. Mr. Delbeni, I ask the following two initial questions of every nominee who appears before any of the committees on which I sit, so I will ask you these initial questions. Since you have become a legal adult, have you ever made unwanted requests for sexual favors or committed any verbal or physical harass uh, harassment or assault of a sexual nature? I have not. Have you ever faced discipline or entered into a settlement related to this kind of conduct? No, I have not. So one of the major issues that we've been tackling uh, in the in VA is the, the issue of the of the uh, electronic health records, and I note that um, your responsibility explicitly does not put you in charge of the electronic health record modernization program. And I'm just wondering why not, because uh, you're the guy, you're the IT guy. <laughs> why aren't you in charge of the system that we, we have spent over a billion dollars, and only now are we saying that we have a system that kind of, you know, d does what we expected to do, as well as I think we're trying to get it in alignment with the, act, uh, the records of the active while, while the uh, people are in active service. Well, thank you for your question. Uh, there was a reorganization, as you well know, mm -hmm. in the, the VA that was announced last week uh, of creating a, an executive director who would respond, be responsible to the deputy directly, the deputy secretary, to really focus on that project, and then functional uh, leaders underneath that would really take you know, the perspective of, of healthcare and, the, and the, the patient, of IT and policy. And so uh, I think that the, the goal there is to get somebody really, really focused and have the deputy secretary really dig in and, and lead that and feel that sense of responsibility. Having said that, mm -hmm. I believe that there's an opportunity for me to take the experience that I've had yes. in the private sector and in working on uh, the Affordable Care Act's website to help. And I think you can count on me jumping in, getting involved with those teams to really see every place that I can um, provide my, my background, my understanding, and, and help there. I think it's, that's distinguished from the whole notion of who would be the particular leader. I think that whoever is gonna be leading uh, e EHRM uh, has to have the kind of background that, and experience that apparently you have. And so I, I hope that whoever is doing that actually can do it. Uh, and that as you seek to work with that person, in fact, is that person in place already? The person uh, that e would be the overall director, I believe they've HRM? announced who that person would be, yes. Okay, so I hope that uh, th th that you will have that opportunity and there's not gonna be this siloing of responsibility so that all of the experience that you can bring to bear is not fully utilized. As we look at IT challenges, so uh, uh, clarify for me, because you are, you are going to be the assistant I was Secretary for Information and Technology. So is it information to the veterans themselves that you would be also responsibly, responsible for? It's, all, it's the systems that, that that service or that care is delivered via. And so all the main, if you think about the main systems that are, are IT systems, being responsible for how they're developed, how they're maintained, and, and ultimately how that, that um, capability is delivered to the, to the end user. I really think that it's important to look at it end to end in that way. If you think about, there are people who build systems and think about it only from the perspective of does it do exactly what it's expected? I think you have to start with what are you trying to accomplish for the, for the end user? And I that's agree. how I approach And this. isn't the end user the veteran? Yes, it is. So I talk with a, a lot of veterans who don't rely on uh, the internet, for example, for information mm -hmm. from the VA, and one of the uh, concerns is that there's, there's a lot of information that never gets to the veterans in a way that they understand what their, uh, what kind of benefits and resources they uh, can uh, look to. So is that part of what you are gonna be responsible for? That well, th this information actually gets to them? I think you're, show, you're talking about some of the complexities that exist in the, in the problem of actually serving veterans with these systems. I think in cases where they're not computer literate themselves, oftentimes there'll be somebody, a caregiver or a member of the VA that will help them. 
But you also have to go back to not just the, the vets that are computer literate, but the entire population and figure out are they all getting care and what can you do to actually improve care, even if you're less literate in the systems themselves. So it becomes a complex and multifaceted problem. Uh, yes, and I, I'm particularly interested in, in all those veterans out there who do not have the kind of, who do not access the kind of, of, of uh, tools that you're talking about. Right. I'm also really interested in your development of telemedicine as a way to really ensure that the veterans get the care they need, as well as I have a, a, a bill that I've been working on that I'm going to want to work with you having to do with just uh, data collection and access to data that will enable the VA to really understand the kind the, the veterans and their, uh, um, the, I, I, I guess, identifying uh, information that will enable us to better um, meet their needs. So that's something that I'd like to um, be in touch with you on. Well, Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And I look forward to- Where'd he go? <laughs> Am I left to my own devices? Oh. My turn? Yes, please, Senator Tupperville. Thank you very much. 